All right, everybody, welcome back to Big Boy Variety. My name, well, you already know my name. <laughs> it's Big Boy Variety, so let's talk college football. Another day, another week, college football action is coming. Um, really, you got to pay attention to Michigan, Michigan State. Michigan State looking, you know, in a big rivalry game to upset the Michigan Wolverines. Yeah, Michigan State did turn the ball over seven times against Rutgers, of all teams. But, you know, it's going to be an interesting contest because it's a rivalry game, because it's always interesting, and because, I mean, yeah, we've seen Joe Milton, you know, do some do some pretty interesting things against Minnesota, but he's got to... He's a, he and Harbaugh have to heat, beat them rivals. And, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be something. You know, because you have to beat your rivals in order to keep your job. And Harbaugh has been on a steady slope of decline. So, you know, I don't know how that's going to go. But if Michigan dominates this game, you know, it's one step closer to Harbaugh keeping his job for a lot longer. And, I mean, it, it's going to set up some interesting things down the line for Michigan, too. So, you know, if they keep winning. Um, other things to look out for, some minor group of five teams, you know, in that are in the rankings, number 19, Marshall, are going on the road to take on Florida International, you know, and Coastal Carolina going on the road to take on Georgia State. So keep it if you're... Fans of either of those teams, keep your eyes out on those. As far as the Big 12 goes, keep your eyes on Kansas State, West Virginia. And if you want to see Iowa State pretty much, you know, get some, get some, get some confidence back, you know, they're probably going to beat up on Kansas. I'm just saying it right now. Um, if things get kind of crazy, you know, if you don't want to watch – you know, Iowa State beat up on Kansas. Maybe you want to watch Clemson beat up on Boston College. But then again, Boston College is a pretty interesting team. They've kept it close with North Carolina. And even though they did get blown out by Virginia Tech, they are an interesting team themselves. It could be an interesting game. And Georgia taking on an inconsistent Kentucky team. That, you know, that Kentucky team beat Tennessee lost to Missouri. Georgia coming off a big loss to Alabama themselves. So it's going to be very interesting. It's going to be very interesting to see what Georgia does in this game. <clears throat> but the real big matchup, I'd say, you know, aside from Michigan, Michigan State, that I'd say keep your eyes on is the number seven team in the country, the Cincinnati Bearcats, taking on the high flying. Brady White led Memphis Tigers. Desmond Ritter, he is looking to prove himself even more. You know, that Cincinnati defense is crazy good. It was crazy good last year. It's crazy good again this year. And they are looking pretty interesting. Cincinnati's trying to keep themselves alive. Again, it's 2020, weird season. And we could potentially be looking at the first group of five team to make make the college football playoff because it's 2020 and not because you know if it was any if it was any other season I don't think this would be you know even a possibility right now I don't think it would be you know a possibility but Cincinnati is looking very interesting because they have a defense that looks pretty damn good and they got an offensive line to protect Desmond Ritter and you know it, it's just very interesting to see what in the world you know Cincinnati does um, the 2.30, well, 2.30 to 3 o'clock, you know, or 3.30 to 4 if you live on the East Coast, um, has some pretty interesting stuff as well. You know, you have Indiana taking on Rutgers. Indiana coming in after a big, big upset against Penn State. They are now ranked in the top 25 in Rutgers. Rutgers is very surprising so far. We've only seen one game with them. They're looking pretty interesting themselves. You know, I think I might tune into this game. I might. Uh, there's also Notre Dame, Georgia Tech. You know, I mean, it's another Notre Dame 
road game after having so many home games to start the season. Um, Georgia Tech did look pretty interesting to start the season, but now they kind of, you know, dropped off back to where they have been for the past couple of years, which is kind of mediocre. Um, Notre Dame, if, if things go the way I think they'll go, I think it'll be another Notre Dame blowout or a defensive struggle. You know, I just don't think Georgia Tech has what it takes to keep up with the number four team in the country. I just don't think they do have that right now. Wisconsin, their quarterback Mertz, um, he's he's on the um, you know the COVID nineteen list. One of those guys that may have contracted it, and he's still getting tested as we speak. Graham Mertz, and they're taking on Nebraska. Um, considering I already saw Nebraska get blown out last week, I don't think I'm gonna be keeping my eyes on that game. But do keep your eyes on the Indiana Rutgers though, and also. The number six team in the country taking on my Texas Longhorns. That's right, the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Shuva Hubbard, Spencer Sanders, they're looking pretty good right now. Oklahoma State defense looking pretty good right now. They're looking like the they're looking like the upstart Baylor team last year that really took off last year. I'm telling you, Baylor that took it off last year. They're look this might be, you know, the team that can win it all in the Big 12 and could potentially go to the college football playoff. I'm just telling you that right now. You know, Oklahoma State, if they if they could keep it up, they can go to the college football playoff. I'm telling you. And it starts against a Texas team that's looking, you know, you know they got some things together. I was very surprised. I mean, who, who else forgot that Tariq Black was on Texas? Me, I forgot, because he hasn't done anything. Um, but yeah, Oklahoma State is a very, very interesting team. They have, they have, you know, a dynamic running back in the backfield, and you know, Texas's defense is not the strongest, not even close. So if, you know, Schubert gets going, gets going crazy, starts running for two hundred yards and stuff like that. It might be a wrap, but you know, Sam. The man, Ellinger, is out there on the other side, and I wonder if we're going to stop calling the same four plays that we always do, you know, and start, you know, attacking Oklahoma State. We, there's some weakness on Oklahoma State. I just haven't seen it yet. And I know I saw the Oklahoma State-Iowa State game last week, but, I mean, I, I still don't see, you know, anything that's, you know, consistently – a weak spur of Columbus Day. I still don't see that yet. So what about, you know, the later games? There's a lot of late games on the slate. You know, Alabama, the number two team in the country. They're taking on Mississippi State. Who cares? It's, it's another Alabama blowout. I can assure you that. Um, SMU, they're still in the top 25 right now. And they'll take on Navy. So, of course, you know, that flex bone. It's going to be interesting. Along with Boise State, they're also taking on Air Force, another flex bone team who I saw last week. Very interesting game there. I wonder how those two games are going to go. Florida is back playing games again, so I'm assuming, you know, Dan Mullen has, you know, he's gotten, you know, something. He's gotten something out of this COVID-19, you know, you know, diagnosis. He's got something out of it, and something tells me he's not going to ask for everybody in Florida to come on back down to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium anymore. You know, he's not asking for all the fans. But they'll be taking on Missouri. Um, I don't really care. It's Missouri. Um, Oklahoma's back in the top 25 themselves. They'll be taking on Texas Tech, but again, I don't. Don't really care about Oklahoma right now. They have two losses. It's hard to care about Oklahoma. They have two losses. Um, North Carolina taking on Virginia again. Another interesting, you know, matchup. Virginia has been keeping teams close. North Carolina has had some trouble putting teams away, but you know, very interesting stuff right there. Um. And last, well, not last, because there's still one more game to talk about after these two right here. We got two big games at the same time. Keep your eyes on both of them. Ohio State 
the number three team in the country taking on Penn State. Penn State defense looking kind of sus. Oklahoma, I mean not Oklahoma, Ohio State riding high, looking like the number three team in the country. It's going to be one hell of a game, I can tell you that right now. Intense. This game has been the last couple of years, and if Sean Clifford and company, James Franklin, you know, they can pull something out of their ass, I can tell you Ohio State might be in a little bit of trouble. But if Ohio State gets going, they get dominant out there, and they start, you know, stuffing Penn State on defense. They start, you know, exploiting Penn State like Michael Panix did last week with Indiana. It's going to be a long night for Penn State. Penn State has to keep this game close. They really have to. And in a surprising twist, Arkansas is looking pretty good themselves right now. Taking on Texas A&M, the number eight team in the country. We haven't seen, I don't think I've really mentioned them at all since they got blown out by Alabama. You know. And they did beat Florida, so there's that. You know, they did beat Florida, but this is another game that they have to prove themselves. Texas A&M does. And Arkansas is just looking very interesting right now. They they have won SEC games this year, which hasn't been a thing the last couple of years. They haven't really won anything in the SEC the last couple of years. This is a very interesting game. Keep your eyes on this one. If you have two TVs, get your second TV out. Turn this game on and keep it on alongside Ohio State, Penn State. And then we have some beautiful Mountain West at dark, or rather BYU at the dark as well. BYU number 11, yeah, number 11 in the country, taking on Western Kentucky again. You know, BYU hasn't had the greatest schedule again. I mean, their schedule was kind of destroyed by COVID-19, so they couldn't play, you know, all the Pac-12 teams that they were supposed to play. Um, you know, all the Power 5 schools that were supposed to, play, were supposed to play six Power 5 schools. They can't. So, this is the best bet. And alongside that, if you want if you want some Mountain West at the dark goodness, you know, with your BYU at the dark, you got Nevada taking on a rather struggling UNLV team. Um, UNLV did not look very good. Did not look very good against San Diego State. Um, I'm wondering how this game will go. If it if it goes, you know, the way I think it will, you know, UNLV has just not looked good. They did not look good in that game. You know, you don't have 25 yards at the end of the first half. You don't. You just don't at all. And he only scored six points. So I wonder how this game is going to go. I haven't seen either of these teams play yet. But it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun way to end the night. And I'm assuming, you know, we'll have a week nine recap either Sunday or Monday. So, you know, there's that. So the Big Ten is on center stage again this week. You have center stage again this week throughout the day, you know, culminating with Ohio State, Penn State. So the Big Ten race already through two weeks is looking way more interesting than what has been happening <laughs> throughout the season. How will Oklahoma State do? That's something that has to be concerning because the entire Big 12 race is not over yet. It is not over. You know, Oklahoma State has to get a comfortable lead in the Big 12 to keep it and to potentially face off against, hopefully, they hopefully want Iowa State or Kansas State again. You know, they hopefully want that. I don't, I don't know if Oklahoma has enough to get there. They've already lost twice. And if they lose again, I think it'll be bottoms up, wrapped, wrapped up. That, that, that's wrapped up for Oklahoma. And Texas, if they lose too, that's pretty much it for them. No Big 12 Conference Championship for them either. So we can, so we can talk about the little schools in the Big 12. The little schools, you know, the Big 2 plus the little 8. You know, we can talk about the little 8 in the Big 12. Um... And also, you know, how in the world are some of these highly ranked top 10 teams that aren't in the top five, you know, that aren't getting looked at as fairly as they should? How, how will they do, you know, I'm talking about Cincinnati and Texas A&M, how will they do, you know, in, in, in the grand scheme of things? So 
that being said, everybody, Big Boy Variety saying so long, and I'll see you in the next video tomorrow, recapping the NFL for week number seven. I'll take care. Have a good day.